uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Louis Thomas, and I'm a regional sales manager uh, for Quebec and Ottawa Valley. So, agenda for today is uh, 70 volt versus uh, 8 ohm systems. Uh, the question to be asked uh, before going forward on a design and designing the system as uh, so where are we starting and uh, we need to understand our project what is and how do we do uh, speaker placement and uh, starting with the sensitivity of the speaker um, loss of volume how do we calculate that and integrate that into our design uh, and uh, what is the amplifier power that we need and we'll also the difference between distributed system and point source system. Basically, what is a 70 volt IMP in system? Well, it's a sound system that will use speakers that are designed to work in high impedance mode, so 100 volt, 70 volt, or 25 volt system. Uh, the speakers on the system will have uh, a 70 volt transformer equipped with a, a power tap setting. It could be a model like illustrated below uh, with a, a selector in the, the transformer. Or um, it can also be a, an older style a transformer with uh, some wire and uh, selecting the right uh, wire will give you the proper tap that you're looking for. The amplifier will have a high voltage, so a 25, 70 volt, or 100 volt output. And uh, this will deliver a constant voltage, and uh, the volumes of the, your speaker will not be affected by the change of the load, of the impedance load of your uh, speaker line. So this is used mainly for distributed speaker system that uh, are use, utilizing many speakers. The low impedance systems basically are uh, equipped with uh, low impedance such as 8 ohm, 16 ohm uh, speakers, sometimes 6 ohm speakers. And uh, there will be two different type of wiring used for uh, those systems. Might be parallel, like illustrated here. So uh, this uh, example is showing two speakers. What happens with the impedance load when you're connecting more than uh, one speaker to an output? Well, in the parallel mode, uh, you take the uh, nominal impedance of your speakers and you will divide this by the numbers of speakers and it's going to give you uh, the uh, overall impedance that you have on your speaker hole. So 4 ohm in this example. Then you can also do series connection, going to positive, negative, positive, negative. Again, in this example, uh, we have two speakers and what happens with your impedance load then? Well, you multiply by the numbers of speakers that you have on your speaker line. So in this example, we have a total load of 16 ohm. So to do uh, and to maintain a specific load, a low impedance system can be fairly complicated on the cable inside. With an IP, uh, impedance speaker system, or 70 volt system as we call them here in North America, well, the only thing that you have to take under consideration on your speaker line is the wattage. So on our example here, we have five speakers tap at one watt each. So we have a five watt load and the impedance is still a constant at the semi volt, at the high impedance. So what are the advantages when we use an high impedance system? All the speakers are connected in parallel, so there is no uh, series and parallel wiring required to maintain the, this uh, specific load. Uh, well, if a speaker's, uh, speaker gets dead, 
on the speed line uh, it will not cause the complete system to fail uh, you will be able to select also a power tap on each speakers and uh, make uh, easier adjustment uh, for a specific zone uh, in regards of the volume that uh, uh, you need. Um, you can add, remove speakers, and this will not affect uh, the complete system. Very long speaker lines will be possible with uh, the right uh, wire ga uh, gauge. Also, uh, it's going to give you the ability to use smaller cable than in low impedance. Also, uh, our simple wall attenuators or 70 volt uh, volume controls can be used to adjust the one or several speakers in each zone. So we see over here a typical diagram of a 70 volt system that it's composed with uh, a background music source, paging microphone, we see our uh, 70 volt mixer amp in that scenario. Uh, some uh, speaker line, also uh, the volume attenuator connected to a couple of speakers below. So this is the typical architecture of a 70 volt system. Now, the real life now. A customer comes to you and say, well, I need a coat on an audio system. My room is 50 by 100 feet long. And normally, that's basically all the information you have at the beginning. But we are professional and we want to give to our customer the best system. So we will have several questions to be asked. We have resumed that in 10 questions that will address, you know, the usage of the of your system. Is it for background, foreground music? Uh, are you going to do some presentation in your, with your system? Are you playing DVD? Uh, are you doing paging? Basically, all of the, those questions will need to be addressed in order to understand well the system that you're uh, trying to put together and what kind of system you need to put together. So that those 10 questions are one, first, where is that system going? Is it going inside or outside? Then uh, this uh, will guide us uh, into selecting some uh, weatherproof speakers or not. Uh, what kind of space are we dealing with? Uh, is it uh, highly reverberant? Uh, do we have uh, art ceiling, art walls, uh, high ceilings, etc.? What is the, the exact size also of the room is a very important question. Uh, this will be needed to calculate uh, the number of speakers and the type of speakers that uh, you'll be utilizing. Uh, is it uh, for ceiling mount or for wall mount? Uh, do we have a special condition there like uh, plenum ceiling? Uh, this time some uh, plenum uh, rated speaker might be used or not. The other question would be, what uh, are we going to do? Uh, use the system for? So, is it for background music? Is it for foreground music? Are we doing paging, signaling in there? One of the very important questions also, and I will never stress that enough, what are the customer expectations on the sound quality of the system? especially in certain commercial applications, sometimes the expectation of the customers are very high and the budget is very low. So we need to work around this and find out exactly what will be the right solution for your customer and the right price also. Do we need deep bass, especially if we have a little bit of sound re, uh, reinforcement in there, uh, like a little bit of uh, staging, let's talk about the, the uh, restaurant bar application where we uh, want to shake a little bit more uh, the bar side as an example uh, is it used for presentation speech or paging and what is the level of uh, intelligibility that is expected from uh, this system uh, we'll understand that, that there is a huge difference uh, between doing a background music system and a paging system in a small commercial uh, places 
and if it's a paging system for an hospital. And the legibility in an hospital is going to be critical. You really want to understand each single word that will come out of your system. Other question to be asked, how long will the system be? Uh, for this, we'll have to also find out what is, it, what is the uh, ambient noise, the background noise of uh, your uh, project. Uh, is the system used for foreground material? Obviously, they're not playing at the same volume. How do we mount the speakers? How can we mount them? Can we use the ceiling? Uh, it's going to be wall mount, so you know uh, the hardware uh, and the speakers will be selected in regards of this also. Are we going to use subwoofer? Uh, same thing. Can they sit on the floor? Uh, do we need to fly them, etc.? We need to address that before starting to de design the system. What will the speaker sp uh, spacing be? Well, this uh, will uh, depend on the several uh, factors, but uh, basically at the beginning, um, we'll be uh, looking for the, the initial layout uh, pattern of the system. Is it going to be square or hexagonal? Uh, then after that, uh, we need to look at the performance uh, or, uh, again, coming back to the expectation of your customer, the performance of the system, what is it looking for. Uh, basically, traditional specification will look for plus, minus 3 dB deviation on an installation. What is the amplifier power and uh, wiring needed? Well, this will depend on the numbers of the speakers that we'll have in our uh, installation and uh, the power setting of each speaker as well. And we'll select the power setting of our tap depending on the ceiling height and uh, the uh, ambience, uh, the audience uh, plane and uh, we'll def define also the SPL or the sound pressure levels in regard of the ambient noise level in your uh, project. The cabling gauge will also depend on the numbers of speakers, the power, and uh, the length of uh, the run of those of this cable as well. Other very important question, and this is coming back also of, to the customer expectation about quality at the same time, is do we need uh, DSP or digital signal processing in that project? Certain of our product uh, will give you this ability, and uh, depending on the speakers that uh, will be selected for your project, some DSP might be necessary. If uh, we think about uh, our uh, TOA F122C, uh, this is an active equalization speaker and will greatly benefit of using uh, our mixer amp like uh, the 9000 series, which has some, uh, some DSP and some uh, speaker uh, equalization pattern. Do we need also muting capabilities in that system? Uh, especially if there is some paging. Do we want to mute completely uh, the background music? Do we uh, want to just dock the music at the lower, at the door, uh, lower level? Uh, the SP engine will give you the ability to control this more easily. Also, uh, if we're dealing in larger installation, we might need some signal leveling and compression in order to maintain uh, a certain volume uh, at paging, and also to prevent uh, some damage to uh, the amplifier. Um, compression and signal leveling might be also very uh, practical in certain location where many people are able to page because uh, small ladies have a small voice and some uh, some guys will uh, take your microphone or their telephone to page and volume levels on a DOI or so. 
where do we set the volume when we have many people like this using the paging system? In the middle, well, it's not always the best scenario. You won't hear correctly uh, the, the, the people that have uh, tenor voice and uh, the, the, the people with uh, bolder voice uh, will uh, break and make the system clip. So some DSP will give you the ability to bring that to a certain level so all the pagings are well heard in the location. Question number eight, do we need multiple amplifier zones? Well, this will depend on your project. If you have a, a zone paging system or a background music system that uh, requests to broadcast different music program in different zone, well, uh, we might have uh, uh, to utilize some uh, different power amps or multi-channel power amps or uh, uh, different numbers of uh, power amplifiers. What are the customer needs, again, and uh, what are the sound source that will be broadcasted there? Uh, do we need a desktop paging microphone? Are we doing telephone zone paging? Are we dealing with uh, a VoIP or an IP telephone system? then we can also utilize our SP11N, which is a module that uh, will be compatible with most of the uh, IP phone switch on the market. What are the music source uh, that uh, the customer will be using? Is it the MP3 satellite music services? Do we have pre-recorded messaging or tone? Uh, we also have uh, different types of uh, digital player that uh, will give you the ability to broadcast uh, your uh, message or your uh, different tones, like the EV20R or the EV350R. We also have in the 900 series and the S series model that uh, will give you the ability to broadcast a chime or a different type of tones. Also, again, I uh, mentioned it earlier, but uh, do we need to uh, mute uh, those uh, source if we uh, need to address paging? And also, do we have to manage uh, priority levels in our uh, broadcasting? Like is my desktop microphone priority over the telephone paging? Or is it prioritary over the, the background music in certain zone? Uh, we need to be able to answer all of those questions. Basically, also, in most of the installation, uh, the fire alarm panel will overwrite uh, almost all the audio system. So we need to be able to uh, deal with this also. So the last question. Which type of system do we really need there? Is it the high or a low impedance? Um, seven volt systems are very practical, practical in certain scenario, but it's not necessarily always the best system to be used. When we're talking about the sound reinforcement, uh, well, normally we'll go with low impedance. So if it's a concert hall, an auditorium, uh, churches, arenas, sport complexes, well, uh, for certain zones, uh, we'll go to impedance. And uh, then it's uh, obviously going to require the bigger speed, uh, gauge of, uh, of cabling, uh, and the wiring is going to be difficult and uh, uh, different than the 70 volt. And we'll have to make sure that uh, we have the, the good speaker uh, load on our uh, amplifiers. Uh, the IMPN system, as mentioned, will be uh, ideal for uh, multi-zone paging, distributed uh, uh, speaker system. It's uh, very good for background music application. It's going to be easier because we'll typically deal with uh, only 16 or 18 gauge uh, speaker wire. The wiring is going to be way easier to be done. 
will be able to use 70 volt uh, volume controls like our 80 series and uh, all the speakers will be cabled in parallel so uh, no real attention to be uh, addressed to the speaker cable. Now what about point source versus distributed? When are we using a point source or a distributed system? So we see here the example of the point source system, so a pair of speakers, presenter in front. Well, the, the pros and cons for this, well, uh, if your ceiling is too high, maybe point source will be more applicable to your, uh, to your scenario. Ceiling is not suitable to install some ceiling speakers. You have a presenter, so you, you're trying to draw the attention, you know, literally, or, uh, it's, and it's more suitable, obviously, for performance. You have more impact, uh, more power coming out of the, a point source system and a low impedance system. The cons, well, uh, the closer you are to the speakers, obviously, it's going to be, the volume is going to get higher, and uh, you will have minimal throw distance. Distributed now. The pros and the cons, well, you'll have a better coverage of your roof, a more even uh, SPL or sound pressure level over your roof, uh, non obstructive look. And the size of the room is not a factor, you just add on some, uh, some speaker. Wiring is going to be more easier, but it's not really suitable for performance uh, with a distributed system. So it's going to be limited to size for the cons and uh, also ceiling material may restrain certain installation. So basically, we have asked uh, all the questions to our customers, talk about this expectation, we know everything about the room, etc. So where do we start? I've been mentioning all, uh, already sound pressure levels, uh, well, SPL as we call it in the business, is expressed in uh, decibels or dB. Uh, it's fairly easy to manage, and uh, some example of uh, SPL or dB levels, well, at 30 dB, it's a very soft whisper close to someone. At 115 dB, it's a very hard rock concert. Uh, Average conversation is going to be around 70 dB. Basically, our ear is going to notice a difference of the volume change with a T 3 dB uh, change in volume. We have the impression that the volume has doubled with a 10 dB change. Also, when we design the system, well, we know now where is about the uh, SPL approximately. So we said that the uh, conversation, male conversation is around 70 dB. So what type of SPL do I need to reach in my project? Well, if it's a new building, if it's, we're dealing with a new construction, we'll have to forecast the ambient noise of that place uh, with uh, the type of building, material use, the activities going on in uh, that new building. Well, and uh, if it's a retrofit world, there is no guess. There is very simple uh, measurement tool, uh, call it decibel meter, that will give you a very accurate idea of your ambient noise in your building. Even depending on the type of project you're dealing with, uh, you can have an application on your phone with a dB meter on it. It's not the best, but, uh, you know, it's going to give you an idea at least of what is the ambient noise that you're dealing with uh, in your installation. And basically, when we're talking about paging, we want to be at least over 10 dB over the ambient noise to make sure that the paging is going to be intelligible. The other things that we need to take under consideration at the very beginning is once you have selected your speaker, so let's say in our scenario we're, uh, today we have selected our F122. Uh, see, 
Well, the specification that you need to be looking at uh, in order to design your system is the sensitivity or the efficiency of your speaker. In this scenario with the F122C, uh, efficiency is 90 dB at one watt at one measure at one meter. The more the speaker is sensitive, well, the less amplifier power obviously you will need to reach the same SPL level. So is a uh, uh, higher efficiency speaker better? Well, if, depending on your application, uh, we might say yes, because it's going to give you, you know, uh, more efficiency and more uh, SPL with a smaller amplifier. But if you're looking for better audio quality, Higher quality speakers not always have the same efficiency as paging equipment. Now, in order to increase my SPL, how do I do this? So if my speaker is 90 dB, one watt, one meter, then in order to increase of 3 dB, so notice a volume change, I need to double up the power. So if I have one watt, I've got 90 dB at one watt and one meter. In order to have 93 dB at one meter, I need to push my tap setting to two watts. Then doubling at two watts will give me another 3 dB. So it's very simple to calculate. That's one watt, 90 dB, two watts, 93, four watts, 96, and so on. What happened now? over the distance. We need to take that under consideration when we're doing uh, our uh, speaker design. Well, when we take distance over our speaker, basically each time you are going to double up the distance, you'll lose 6 dB. So my speaker is efficient at 90 dB at 1 watt 1 meter at 2 meter with the same watt is now 84 dB. And if we double up again the distance to 4 meter, we're falling at 78 dB. So again, 90 dB, 1 watt, 1 meter, 2 meters, 84, 4 meters, 78, 8 meters, 72 dB. So it's very important to take that under consideration, especially when you're dealing with high ceilings. So example over here, we can see that uh, my speaker tap at one watt, one meter is giving me 84 dB at two meter, three meter, and at four meter, 78 dB. And if we take a different tap, then we'll uh, change the power settings in order to accommodate the SPL that we're looking for on our project. In this scenario, let's say we need uh, about 4 watts of power, the closest tap on my uh, tap selector is 5 watt. So we have selected the 5 watt tap on our speaker in order to do our project. Now what happened off axis? Same thing when you're doubling the space, moving 30 degree is also giving you a loss of volume of uh, 6 dB. So this will help us to calculate uh, the spacing between the speakers. This is important in order to make our design. And as I've mentioned at the beginning, the typical project will call for plus minus 3 dB of deviation uh, on, the, on the SPL in order to maintain uh, a constant SPL in the installation. Paging horn will react in the same fashion with a 30 degree uh, uh, on the uh, off axis while you lose 6 dB. So again, uh, the spacing has to be calculated in regards of this if you need to maintain a certain SPL over your project. Now, how much amplifier power do we need on this project? Well, my example uh, we have decided that we'll be tapping our speakers at 5 watts in order to get around 84 dB at uh, our ear level. So 
So uh, we have determined that uh, we have 19 speakers on our project. So we have a total load of 95 watts on, uh, of, uh, of speakers. Uh, we need to calculate a certain headroom in order to uh, protect our equipment and uh, uh, abort uh, the, amplifier, uh, the amplifier clipping. So uh, 95 watts plus uh, 20%, we're at 114 watts. So the closest amp that uh, we manufacture is going to be a 120 watt 70 volt amplifier. Now, what is the wire gauge that I will uh, use? Well, uh, we're using 70 volt, and we have over here a little chart that's going to help us in order to select. So we have close to 100 watt uh, load. We'll have a total run of uh, 720 feet. So basically, we'll use a 16 gauge for this scenario. What are the tools that uh, we can help you with uh, in order to uh, design your project? Well, we have worksheets, and uh, you can get those uh, through us, the RSM. Just uh, give us a call or send us an email. It's going to be a pleasure for us to provide you with this. Basically, those worksheets will help you to answer the 10 question I was presenting to you today and have all the information necessary to design your project. We also have a software called the SPV, Speaker Placement uh, Software. This is downloadable from our website. And uh, we also have some webinars presenting uh, this, uh, this tool. And uh, you can certainly also access it and review it. But uh, this software will give you the ability to enter the parameters of your project, so the, the ceiling, height, uh, the, the width, and the, the, the dimension of, the, of your room. And it's going to populate automatically the numbers of speakers that you need for this particular project. Uh, it is a simple software. so. It's only doing square or hexagonal design, but uh, if you have, you know, a little bit complicated projects, you might have to uh, do a little bit of legwork too and do some uh, hand scratch to figure out what you need for your project. We also have some uh, speaker and uh, amplifier guide that you can download from our uh, website in order to select. Uh, the right speaker or and the right amplifier for your uh, application, and you can certainly contact us also in order to help you out. Especially if you have more complicated projects, uh, give us a shout, and uh, we'll team up with you guys and help you gather all the information that you need. And uh, if need be, well, uh, our uh, tech support team. Uh, has the ability to work with uh, some more evaluated software called Ease and Ease Focus that uh, will give us uh, the ability to design more so sophisticated projects if we're dealing with uh, uh, performance plays, uh, sport complex, arenas, etc., cetera, uh, out of worship. Uh, we're able to sim simulate it, uh, your, your rooms and uh, select the right speaker and give the right installation guide to this project. So some of the products that uh, are used for your 70 volt application, well, we can recognize over here the uh, Legacy 900 system, uh, the PG series, one, three, and five channels, uh, our 9000 series, our power amps, the DA series, and all our speaker line that uh, we have over here, part of it at least. So our F-series ceiling speakers, our paging horns, H-series, box speakers, those are all products that uh, are uh, available to you guys for your 70-volt or low-impedance project.